Alright, hello fellow engineers. We're back in Engertopia. Alright, so as some of you know, I worked on the Stonehenge tunnel project in the United Kingdom. I wanted to go through in this episode how that sort of went about. So this road here, the Scarlet Highway and Belmont Highway, I'm going to delete those, replace them with a windy road, put a Stonehenge monument in, and then design the tunnel and sort of show how we went about it, basically. Uh, but first... We're just having a little look at the Billy Ray district over here. We've got a few abandoned buildings that we're going to have to get rid of. Just a nice little tidy up of this area. I've noticed... Oh. <laughs> that was just slightly too late. I noticed that house didn't have a connection to the water sewer. And uh, it's just been abandoned now. So <laughs> demolish that. So I've got my drainage. Oh, this whole street doesn't actually have drainage. That's not good. So we'll just sort that out a bit. There we go. Uh, we've got a bit of a bin problem over here. So obviously all the bin collection is going all the way back to our main area. So we could sort of look to do another like incineration plant or something. But to be honest, Sodom. <laughs> they're about to be made stupid rich because as we found out last time, their whole area is built on an oil field. I'm sure at some point some massive oil company will come over and buy all their houses and they'll be millionaires. But until then, they can suffer with stinky garbage. Right, so we've sort of left our main area in a bit of a state, if I'm honest. We spent last time building our new area, the most efficient junction ever, which I hope you guys liked. Hope you enjoyed that video. I was a little bit offended, if I'm honest, to uh, read some of your comments about that junction. So if we just head over. But yeah, so I had quite a few comments saying this wasn't actually the most efficient shape and that some of you thought I may have done this just because it's a comedic shape, which I don't really understand. There's a nasty rumor spreading on this channel, a rumor which says I have some sort of weird obsession with this shape. And to me, that's just efficient junction design. I don't see anything wrong with that. But surely if I had an obsession, I wouldn't just do some like highway layout in that shape. I would have maybe added a public sculpture in that shape, which for some reason has a car parked underneath it. I didn't realize that's actually a road. <laughs> or if I was really, really that obsessed, maybe I would have built my whole city in that shape and people would have only just realized. But I don't know. I think people are just reading too much into that, if I'm honest. So we'll just carry on fixing my city. I think, yes, my landfill sites are emptying, so that's good. I've got two more up here that are all emptying. Unfortunately, my trees are getting a bit nailed. This industrial area is very industrial. Uh, but looking at people's needs, there's we're looking pretty good, if I'm honest. Everyone's reasonably happy. So the sewage treatment is a bit ropey. And as you saw before, I really should be looking to sort of clean that up. I was actually thinking maybe I could like terraform something like a container away from the river. Maybe like a separate reservoir <laughs> of stink. I don't know. Oh, we've got some more abandoned buildings up here. Oh, look. Go nuts for donuts. Hey, what's that building doing? It's got scaffolding. I'm quite intrigued. I don't know what is going to happen here. I think we should just watch this for a little bit. Oh, it's coming down. Oh, it's got a makeover into a bigger building, has it? Oh, it's no longer shops. It's just a boring... Oh, it's a cinema. Ooh, that's cool. But yeah, so I noticed happiness pretty good, if I'm honest. All in the... Well, all on the right side of the graph. Healthcare, not bad. Death care, very bad. For some reason, <laughs> people keep dying over here. I think from what I've seen in the comments. In this game, wind turbines kill people. <laughs> Just being near one, death. Not quite sure what causes those deaths, but I think I might try. I've got quite a bit of cash, so I might try and sort of move all these off the hill and just add more of these floating ones. Well, they're not floating. They're like, we've got very deep foundations. But yeah, it doesn't appear to be a shipping lane, so we should be good just to block that up or at least just move down here. We've got a bund that should shield our citizens. So let's add the new ones. And then we'll start taking away the old ones. We do have the option of coal power plant and an oil power plant, but don't really want to go that route, if I'm honest. Let's keep keep it green. Ah, so we've got this orange line, the boundary, and that shows where the sound will go. So I think if we go like, I think that's as close as we can go without affecting people. All right, so I added a load and we'll try and get rid of these ones. So see ya. Yay, they're all happy because they're not dying anymore. Right, what is the power situation? Power is still very good. Are people dying still? I'm worried these two might be a bit close. 
Oh, so everyone's still dead in there. Is it because I don't have a crematorium and they don't want to be buried? Is that what's going on? Right, so let's, let's see. Do we have a crematorium? What would that be under? Ah, I can't unlock crematorium yet. I need double the population, 16,000. So sorry, people that want to be burned. You're going to be buried, it seems. Look, all these people are happy again. They're rebuilding their houses and all is good. Right. What shall we focus on today then, chaps? I think it might be wise to look down here and see there's a very high demand for residential. So we're going to have to build a new residential zone. Now the question is, <laughs> do I get rid of this stupid shape? I think as we have a nice roundabout up here, which for some reason rocks have grown and moved. <laughs> the rocks grow? I didn't know that. Get off my damn road. Damn rocks. Look at them everywhere. All right, that's better. So yeah, I was thinking as this is a roundabout, at the moment it's, it's only purpose is for people to do a full loop if they took a wrong turning up here, which is a bit silly. We should probably have a new area coming off. So I'm going to add a junction, a little arm off this roundabout and add a new residential area. So we'll keep the one way off and on a little arm like that. All right, so we've got a little stubby junction here. I think we're just going to do like a two-way, yeah, a nice two-way road. Let's add some curvage. So I think I want to come over this way a little bit, try and like use up the space. I'm going to have a bit of a junction off there. And I think we'll sort of loop back around and maybe a junction off this bit as well. I might do a little like cul-de-sac type. Yes, yeah, so there is a little bit of a gap in the middle. I could put a little park in there maybe. But for now, we'll paint that green. Start getting loads of houses. I'm going to have to add the drainage as well. So yeah, before people go too mental, how can we get drainage? So we'll go from up here. So obviously we want to keep it semi-realistic. So we'll keep it under the highway like that. Up to this roundabout. All right, so we're just on pylons over here, just temporarily. And I might, I could keep this curvy bit going. Actually, yes, quite cool little shapes that. It's quite safe. We got a junction on the outside of the bend. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna add that park that I said in the middle of these houses. It's like a nice little village green, I think. I don't know if I've unlocked footways yet. It'd be nice to have a little footpath up to it. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be any footpaths, which is a bit of a shame. So I might just build my own sort of. Park. They don't seem to have like. <laughs> boundary fences these houses they're all sort of like yeah we just we just live in harmony that's fine this might make this like a nice little public area be nice if someone cut the grass but hey hey oh we can literally make our own kids playground that's wicked so we'll do that spinning wheel a seesaw and a slide complex that is what i'm talking about oh look at this dude sunbathing okay he's just sat there on his phone or on his tablet catching some rays Meanwhile, as kids just playing out in the playground. That's awesome. My uh, my hospital is still very empty, which is good. And people are loving the bouncy castle site right next to the hospital. That's very good to see. <laughs> All right, just clear out a few more demolished buildings. Oh, flaming ring, really? <laughs> That's a horrible name. Oh, we can get rid of one of our things. Boosh. See ya. So let's let's get on with Stonehenge then. Right. All right. So anyway, I'm just going to pause this quickly. So this could be a disaster. <laughs> so at the moment, Stonehenge, it's not a dual carriageway the whole way through. Basically, there's a dual carriageway. For example, there's like this. Oh my god, that's so lumpy. Can I fix that with the move it mod? Oh god, I have not made that better. <laughs> Shit, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? Well, to be honest, we're sort of going to demolish this anyway. So I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to get rid of those. We'll connect them up later. All right, so here is Stonehenge. <laughs> it looks exactly the same, trust me. Uh, it's back in the day, before people were sort of aware of, I don't know, the damage, etc. Uh, they decided to build a road right by Stonehenge. So a fairly bog standard road, like a two-way carriageway, goes right past the henge, sort of follows the contours a bit. Just what you'd expect from a normal road. A few little bends and stuff. And like in real life, it leads to a floating hot dog van. <laughs> what is that? No, it leads to a roundabout. So we'll do a one-way roundabout. Not the neatest thing you ever see, but who cares? It's about to get demolished anyway. Yeah, massive kink in it, just like that. Right, so this is an accurate depiction of the existing Stonehenge A303 road in Britain. So we've got a roundabout from a dual carriageway. So we've got dual carriageway leads to a roundabout. Because this cut... Okay, so basically, it's basically... Like, let's start from the beginning. Right, so at the moment in Stonehenge, there's a main road, the A303 that runs past it. Stonehenge on your left as you go past and just carries on, leads to a roundabout and they've drooled past there. So there's 
a dual carriageway down there. This is a motorway, three lanes, but there's two lanes in real life. And likewise, at this end, there's a very realistic roundabout. And again, dual carriageway, because that all got modernized. They didn't want to modernize the stretch past Stonehenge, because obviously this is a World Heritage Site. Very, very special land. Like, the, well, basically it's the first time a road has ever been approved in a World Heritage Site. This new, not this existing one, but the new tunnel one. So it's very protected, very in the public eye. So obviously one option would just be get rid of your roundabout, dual carriageway all the way through. So just make this a wider road. However, obviously that's a lot of land take. It's already like if you ever go to Stonehenge, you like stood in like there's a bloody main road like right there. Like what? <laughs> So obviously at some point the government commissioned a design to be made and for whatever reason it was decided a tunnel would be the best solution. Positives of that in terms of especially from Stonehenge is when you're at Stonehenge if there's a tunnel you will not see a road and the design was designed in such a way that you will not be able to see like anything. So as far as you can see from Stonehenge because of the topography of the land and stuff you won't know that there's a road anywhere near it. So not only does that make it nicer for Stonehenge, it also means like the, the air pollution currently damaging the stones, etc. Uh, that will be gone. So hopefully they'll last a bit longer. So that will be very good. Uh, secondly, obviously this area has very important archaeological features, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much you put a spade anywhere, dig a hole and you'll find something interesting. So by building a tunnel, you're essentially reducing like the likelihood of any of that stuff being destroyed. Because with a road, it's all surface level. It's, I don't know, I guess about a meter-ish you might dig sort of to get the road flat. I don't know, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. But uh, that's going to cause a lot of disruption. You might accidentally damage some significant fines, etc. Whereas the tunnel will be very, very deep. It's going to be bored. But we'll get into that. We will get into that. Uh, thirdly, tunnel doesn't really need drainage. So obviously any rain that falls on a road, that water needs to be taken somewhere. Not very natural thing to do. Obviously the best thing to replace grass is just put grass. Whereas tunnel won't be affected by the rain, really. Uh, the downsides. Tunnels are super, super expensive. Like, I'm pretty sure the tunnel is about 80% of the cost of this entire scheme. Uh, and it's only like a third of the length of the scheme. And of that 80%, I'm... It's something, like don't quote me on this, but it's something incredible like 80% of that 80% cost. So I don't know, that's probably like 70-ish percent of the entire scheme's budget is just for the tunnel boring machine. Like for the machine to come, get built and drill costs 70-ish percent of the entire scheme. Which is absolutely mental. One bit of machinery can cost that much. But it's actually quite interesting. It's because they have to build like an entire factory plant behind it to deal with all the like tailings coming out. And not only that, they might have to. Like tunnel boring machines, absolutely huge piece of machinery. And these are the current roads to get there. Like tiny, narrow, little windy things. So they might even have to build a port, build a new road to it. <laughs> and then ship this machine from wherever it's built i think germany or something so yeah, yeah basically lots of costs there's lots of ifs and buts like none of that stuff's been decided yet because it's still in like preliminary design stage but uh, the other sort of downside is tunnels are usually built to go through things like that like mountains rock and usually it's because that's in the way they're usually just doing a straight road and like oh there's a bloody mountain here who put that there uh, oh well we're gonna have to bore through it however this is a bit different this is flat ish land and it's like we're gonna make a tunnel for the sake of a tunnel essentially so this is very different to what you'd expect normally when designing a tunnel but uh so let's let's start building so what they're gonna do obviously i'm not gonna be able to do this in real time because it'll be too complicated but obviously this is quite a busy road like if you ever look at pictures of stonehenge it's always traffic jams along this road that's why it needs upgrading because there's well dual cadre up this end dual cadre at that end it's like a pinch point and everyone's going slow going like "Ooh, stonehenge so in real life when they're doing this scheme they wouldn't just be able to go boink 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 they wouldn't just be able to hit pause and stop all traffic they'd have to keep it going so that means very complicated traffic management like temporary roads all that sort of stuff this one's kind of easy because you can do most of the tunnel stuff while this road is still there it's just at the tie-in points so what i mean by the tie-in points so obviously there's going to be i don't know let's say from there it's going to be a tunnel so obviously this bit kind of clashes with the existing road so it'd be quite hard to build your tunnel entrance 
while keeping the road in place. So you probably have to do like a little temporary bit around it. But uh, right, so we've demolished this roundabout. We will go demolish this roundabout. So we're going to take our roads. So we're after a highway. I'm going to do this one. We're going in pretty much a straight line. So we're going to use the straight bit, but we're going underground. So page down allows me to go underground. So there's our sort of tunnel stretch. You can see the existing roads still there on top. Right, it's now straight line down. And I'll just connect my junction up. Why does it do that? Can anyone in the comments tell me? <laughs> Why does adding junctions just make craters in my roads? Really annoying. And I still can't get over how stupid it... Like, what is that bend? <laughs> you would die if you tried to drive that road. But, uh, but anyway, let's, let's assume that that's all good. So this would be the final sort of solution. So you can see these tunnels, they're really unusual. You don't really see... These are called tunnel portals as well. Technical term, that is. They're basically the entrance to the tunnel, <laughs> as you can see. Usually, it'd sort of be like upright, like vertical, like the road would just be going straight. The road wouldn't necessarily drop in, but it does for Stonehenge. Because as I said before, there's no mountain or hill we're trying to get through. We're literally going underground for the sake of it. Well, for the sake of this, really. This lovely monument. Which I think there's something, like, they recently found out it was built in Wales originally or something. And moved there. Don't know. But I think it might be nice just to name these tunnels after some Patreons. So rather than the Taylor Phillips Tunnel whoever that is. This is going to be the Yannick Becker Tunnel. And this other one, in the other direction, it's the OC Deer Tunnel. <laughs> Again, thank you. Oh no. Oh, I didn't save it. Oh, bollocks. So yeah, thank you, Patreons. I hope you appreciate stupid naming conventions. And I'm sorry, people that have just found out they're now a testicle or a schlong. <laughs> oh, look. I didn't realize that was one as well. That was subconscious. What is wrong with me? Yes, I had no idea. But yes, there are tunnels. So the existing road, they can just dig that up. So boosh, 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 boosh. And now, green field. So when you're stood at Stonehenge, you look around. There's no, there's not a road in sight. That used to be full carnage traffic. But now nothing, just... We'll, we'll put a tree over that or something. I know, I know. We'll make it realistic. So because the ground slopes like this a bit, this is all existing. I'm not doing this afterwards. This isn't engineering. This is just the existing topography. So if you're stood at Stonehenge, marveling the stones, you can't see road. Ignore that. You can't see road in either direction. It's all natural. It's as it was thousands of years ago. But yeah, so the drainage, because obviously I did the drainage on this, so I, I know a bit about it. So tunnel drainage, this was all completely new to me. Obviously tunnels aren't very common. They're very expensive, so they're quite a new thing. And I learned quite a lot. It was quite interesting, and I thought I'd share some of that. So obviously rainwater lands on the road usually, and then falls to the side into a drainage system. Over here, just falls on grass. Sorted. Jobs are good. And what they've done, the, the actual tunnel concrete round, because this, uh, although the portal is square, once it gets underground, it's a round hole and it's just lined with concrete. That's got a waterproof membrane in as well. So water won't be able to seep in. It probably will a little bit still, but we can deal with that another way. But essentially, completely waterproof all the way through. So rain will land here. And obviously, because the road is falling down, the water that lands on the road, the rain, will go towards the hole. So we just do a little bit of normal drainage. So that's collected. But that drainage, it continues through the tunnel. The big thing with tunnels and the whole drainage thing, it's not rainwater. Usual roads, you're draining the rainwater. So with tunnels, you're draining a little bit of groundwater. So obviously where all this rain and just the general water table like pushes against that waterproof membrane, some of it will get in. So there's a tiny bit of seepage into the tunnel. But generally, you're designing for like the fire extinguishers. So tunnels are very dangerous in terms of fire. If there's a fire in it and people are trapped inside, they can suffocate, the fire can spread like nasty, nasty. So the main sort of thing you need to drain is should there be a fire, there's like water that hoses down and extinguishes the fire and that's what we need to drain. Most tunnels are sort of, they go from like a high point to a low point. So if you think the road from here, this is higher than down there. So the road would just be falling in a straight line. So any water that enters the tunnel or any, if the fire extinguishers go off, all the water could just run out the other side. Stonehenge tunnel, bit different. Basically, because there's a dip at this end, so the road's falling into the tunnel. And if you come over this end, 
same thing, road is falling into the tunnel. There's a low point in the middle and that's where all the water will meet. So the road heads downhill to a low point and then back uphill again. So at this location, there's like a sump. It's like a big concrete box and that stores all the water. And there's a pump in there and the pump, when the water hits a certain level, because you don't want the pump running all the time because it'll just waste electricity, petrol, I don't know, whatever it runs on. But when it gets to a certain level, it empties by the pump turns on and it pumps all the water up. So the water comes up to here and then it enters like a normal drainage system. But there's actually like a controller in here. So if it's contaminated, so if there has been a fire and it's all like the extinguisher water, or maybe there was like a fuel spillage and it's full of fuel. There's like a sensor that senses if the water's clean or not. If it's clean, it just goes into the normal drainage system with the rest of the highway. Otherwise it gets stored in a tank and then big old tankers will come along and uh, suck it out and take it away to be disposed of appropriately. So that's quite interesting. Oh, for me, it, it might not be for you. If it is, that's cool. If it isn't, that's also cool. But, uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much the story of the Stonehenge. I don't know, I can go into more detail another time maybe. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, I'll cover them in the next my next video maybe because this is part of Engetopia now. This is this is it. This is real life in a game. But anyway, before we go, let's just go over here and just see what happens to a hot dog van when we press play. Oh, he just quickly gets back on the carriage ray like nothing happens. Right. So how does our new tunnel work? Everyone's going underground. Oh, look at it. And here you go. Our first people are coming out the tunnel. That's awesome. So yeah, everything is good. And if there's a crash in there, <laughs> hopefully the drainage will be right and it will be fine. And here's lovely Stonehenge. Ah, oh. right. That was quite fun. Quite enjoyed explaining my job in this game. But uh, peace, love and tunnels. I'll catch you next time. Bye, guys.